Hello, Dung Eeps. Uh, been a long time since I've actually picked up stick apart from a lesson with Steve A last fortnight. And um, uh, just really got into Cre uh, Greg's um, uh, uh, Goya's Dream, my fave track. And I uh, just wanted to show you a few little hacks that I, or little things that I've been finding helpful along the way. So it occurred to me, how am I going to actually practice the two scales that uh, are suggested for this this, this um, piece. So there's the over the D flat, there's D flat Lydian. And I thought, well, usually you think about um, box shapes and a whole bunch of uh, hand on and rubbish like that, right? But just just practicing the scale up and down is the, this one string or as much of the one string as you can. So with the uh, focus on maintaining some more integrity in the left hand side of things. So uh, something like... <laughs> easier, <laughs> easier done than said. So that C is nice to if you retain the C uh, when you're thinking about the F harmonic minor scale. Welcome to West Moona. Here's my head! Anyway, well, help. Tazzy. I think after a while, just letting your ears get used to the shared notes that belong to the D-flat Lydian and the F harmonic minor. Hello, Dung Eeps. Um, so I just want to share with you how I managed to think of the triplet, the crotchet triplet over eighth notes. You know, uh, quarter note triplet over eighth notes in Goya's Dream, like in the chorus, bar 38, 40. Um, I kind of I may have taken some artistic license in my own phrasing. You know, if it's if you think of it literally, it's one and two and ba da ba ba. So it's the flam of the grace note, like as a tap, a hammer on. Uh, uh, it, you know, if it's if it's literal rhythmically, think of it literally. Da, da, ba. And two and now I've got to stretch out that that hammer on a bit. But if you forget the hammer on and think of the triplet itself, um, if you open out, if you augment the intervals, meaning that it, you make them twice as long, you can think of it as one bar of four, and it's basically three over four, right? Um, and if you think of that in triplet, it sounds like one and a two and a three again, up four and a one and a two and a three again, up four. So you can see there's four, every fourth triplet, eighth, is being accented here. One and a two and a three again, up four and a. It's like saying one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But it's so much easier to think just in the triplet eighth note. So that gives you <clears throat> four in the left hand and three over, which of course then becomes four eighth notes and the crotchet or the quarter note triplet over the top. One and two and a three and a four. Uh.
back to one, two, uh, three, a four. One and a two and a three and a four. Um, you could practice just the without the, t the hammer on, you know? But I think that's how I got around it, was just do the... And I think I'm actually just... Um, I'm alternating, so I mean, whatever fingering you want to do, I'm sure it works out probably better the way Greg's laid it out, but um, I just think, just go with whatever. Um, so anyway, that that three over four helps to really define and get a, give me a way into being able to play that level of independence of the melody and bass, right? Uh, and then from there, you might want to just stretch it out so it doesn't become so heavy and locked down. So it's a reference point and then just move with it and phrase like you'd like to. So that was sort of the main thing rhythmically that I wanted to share is um, the whole drum thing of how to think of, of a way into uh, playing those polyrhythms. And I, I don't think that you can rely on that every time, but that certainly helped this time around. So, um. <laughs> getting there um just thought you might enjoy um see me try to get that together and um just hopefully you know, take some encouragement and some ideas around how to approach the arrangement cup nation see ya